Lords, that concludes oral questions for today. PNQ on COVID-19, reintroduction of certain restrictions. Lord Scriven. My Lords, I beg leave to ask a question of which I have given private notice. The question is as follows. To ask Her Majesty's Government, further to the rising number of COVID-19 cases and comments made by the NHS Confederation regarding the introduction of certain restrictions, what criteria they have put in place as the triggers to implement their COVID-19 Plan B? Can I thank the Noble Lord for this very important question? As set out in the Government's comprehensive COVID-19 autumn and winter plan, if the data suggests that NHS is likely to come under sustainable pre unsustainable pressure, the Government has prepared Plan B contingency measures. We monitor a wide range of COVID-19 data closely so we can act if there is a substantial likelihood of this happening. We also track the economic and societal impacts of coronavirus to ensure any response takes into account those wider effects in a balanced way. My Lords, Professor Stephen Reicher, a member of SAGE subcommittee, said yesterday, quote, I don't want a lockdown. The danger is if, is if you do nothing in terms of rising infections, long COVID and hospitalisations, there will be no alternative left, end quote. So could I ask, based on what the Minister has just said, what evidence, what evidence does the Government have as why scientists such as Professor Reicher are wrong in seeking mitigation measures now to deal with the worrying number of viral transmissions as a way of stopping future lockdowns? Yeah. In order to judge the next action, that what the government has done has laid out Plan A, and Plan A is sort of focused for the winter 21-22 on building defences through vaccines, antivirals, and disease modifying therapeutics identifying and isolating cases of uh, transmission through test and trace and supporting the NHS and social care, but also advising people on how to protect themselves and offering clear guidance and, and communications. Well, it's quite clear that those things aren't working. And when I saw the Secretary of State for Bayes doing the media rounds this morning, denying that Plan B was coming down the track, I thought we might open a book on how soon it will take the government to actually launch Plan B. I would like to ask the Noble Lord the Minister whether Plan B becomes necessary because the Government have made such a mess of Plan A, with very late vaccinations for the 12 to 15 year olds and a worryingly low uptake of booster jabs. So is it too late, I have to ask the Minister, to prevent an NHS winter crisis with the knock-on effects that that will have for our backlog? I thank the Noble Baroness for her question, and also while I've got the opportunity to thank her for her advice um, in, as a new boy in, in the role. But can I just say, in terms of uh, the answer to the specific question, uh, we, uh, we continue to look at a number of different uh, factors and indicators, economic and health, uh, before we judge whether it's necessary to move to Plan B. Uh, plan B does not actually involve complete lockdown. What Plan B involves is introducing mandatory vaccines only COVID status certification in certain riskier settings, illegally mandating face coverings in certain settings, such as public transport, and commuting clearly and urgently to public if the risk level agree increases. My Lord, sir. Could my noble friend uh, tell us that following the amazing success of the vaccine rollout, what the proportion of hospital beds that are occupied by COVID patients is? Because it seems to me that some people, some doomsayers, are trying to create panic where there's no need for it. Thank my noble friend for the question. I don't have the detailed data and I will write to him. But in terms of the link between cases, hospitalisation and deaths, it's quite clear that the vaccine has been working in breaking the link between the number of cases, the number of, uh, yes, sorry, the number of cases and the number of hospitalisations and the number of deaths. Would the Minister uh, accept that one of the unfair criticisms in some ways of the last 18 months is in these issues it's been too little too late yeah, yeah. now that cannot happen again and I mean we need to set good examples at Prime Minister's questions today there wasn't a single Conservative MP wearing a mask mm -hmm. in a crowded chamber what on earth is that as an example to the people on the tubes and everything else? Yeah, yeah. Clearly, some yeah, yeah. small measures now will save the big measures later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, could I agree with the Noble Lord that it's important that we do take as many measures as possible to make sure that we don't move, have to move to Plan B? 
but I, 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 I can assure the noble lord that I do wear my mask, hopefully, hopefully to, to set an example, and I hope others, others will too. But it really is important that we understand what the factors are that are driving this rising numbers and the most effective way of tackling it. Um, my lords, um, can my noble friend, uh, the minister, say what action the government is taking to ensure that uh, the um, inequalities that have been experienced by black and ethnic minority people in relation to COVID-19 are being addressed um, now and what action actually is being taken. Can I thank my noble friend for that question, particularly in the light that it is Black History Month and an important month to be celebrated in terms of the contribution that the Afro-Caribbean community have made to this country over many years. But in terms of uh, looking at the specific, specific issue, sadly there are some demographics in the communities when you look at the, the uptake of vaccines that have a lower uptake. And the government is discussing with a number of stakeholders how we can improve information, but also in encourage and exhort uh, people from these communities to take the vaccines government advisers who are advising the government to implement Plan B. Can you say which ones are advising the government not to implement Plan B? <laughs> I'm sure the Noble Baroness will, uh, will uh, appreciate the fact that all these issues are ne not necessarily binary and there are often a number of trade-offs, not only between economic and uh, health factors, but also within the health community itself. So, for example, there have been warnings that if you go down to more restrictive measures, what will happen is you'll see an increase, first of all, in those patients who are unable to have the surgery that they had planned, or mental health cases. My Lord, Lord, back to the answer he gave to my noble friend, Lord Rooker, on the issue of mask wearing. M mask wearing, my Lords. Um, the, the, the evidence seems to be that wearing masks does have an impact on whether or not uh, viruses are transmitted. And in this case, there is efficacy, not only in respect of COVID-19, but of other viruses, which could be, be uh, circulating at this time of year and themselves putting pressure on the NHS. What is it that the government cannot bear about asking people to wear masks? It has no economic cost. It costs very little in terms of inconvenience and has a very significant impact. Yeah. I'd like to assure the Noble Baroness that Plan B does involve the issue of um, ensuring that legally mandating face coverings in certain settings, such as public transport and shops. Um, and I'm sure many of the Noble Lords would have recognised when they are travelling in by public transport and the number of people wearing masks on public transport, e even though advised by the transport companies, has dropped. My, my lords, my, my lord, um, I have a daughter who works in A&E in a London hospital who simply says, please, will you make people re act responsibly once again? It costs us absolutely nothing. We acted too slowly previously, 10% increases on the last week. Please just get on with plan B. Can I thank the right Reverend uh, Prelate for, 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 their que for his question? And it is important. I, you know, personally, I do believe that many people should be wear wearing masks, and there's, there's evidence for it. But the fact is, we have to uh, look at a number of indicators and, and, and balance those up. But is it not the case? I think. Sir, could my noble friend tell us how many of those of us who are eligible for the third jab, I had mine, have had it? And could he also tell us what forward planning we have? Is this going to be an annual event? And are the resources available to ensure that it can be continued indefinitely? I'd like to thank my noble lord for that very important question. There has been, a, a, it seems that some of the data suggests there has been a slower uptake in the, in the booster. I don't have the exact information and data available on the uptake of the, of the, third, of the booster, but I will make sure I write to the noble friend, my noble friend. My lords, the noble lord, the minister, uh, keeps referring to plan B, but he hasn't answered the fundamental question that my noble friend, Lord Rooker, raised. This government has too often in the past been slow to respond and as a result has had to introduce far harsher measures as a consequence. Does he accept that that has been the case in the past? And what assurances can he give us that as we go forward that is not going to happen later this year? 
Well, I'm afraid I would disagree with uh, the noble lord on, on, on that particular question. In fact, the UK is seen as a leader in the speed and efficiency in which it adopted vaccines. Many years ago, countries that were criticising the UK uh, only a year later were saying, how did you do it? How did you manage to roll out your vaccine so quickly? And of course, things, things very, uh, change, and it's very important that we balance all the factors up when considering whether to move to a plan B. Oh. Oh. One of, the reasons, um, one of the reasons why the, there is a health crisis at the moment seems to me to be a non-COVID crisis. Would the Minister comment on the fact that the backlog, the collateral damage of um, lockdowns has created a terrible situation, non-COVID related, so don't overreact? And just quickly, on Plan B, which experts will you take advice from? Will it be Professor Riker, a behavioural and social psychologist? or the NHS Confederation run by somebody who was on the moral maze with me. I mean, not all experts are experts, or that should be listened to, my lords. Well, can I thank the noble Baroness for pointing out the important issue that there is a trade-off, and there are some who continue to argue against moving to Plan B, and it's important that we assess the, the sort of balance of arguments, not only health-wise and the trade-offs within health itself, and there will be some health uh, patients who are concerned about Plan B because how it affects their access to health care, but also other wider societal factors. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord, uh, will the noble lord ensure that any change in government policy, whether it be Plan B or other changes, will be proper consultation with the devolved administrations? The government has, co has coordinated action and been in constant conversations with the devolved administrations, or one, as one of my noble uh, lords, uh, one noble lord was said, said uh, the devolved uh, go governments, in terms of coordinating um, and learning from each other in terms of a UK-wide response. Um, noble lord, uh, the minister will be aware that not only ethnic minority communities disparate, uh, had tremendous disparities in terms of the experience of COVID, but so did people with disabilities and long-term care uh, was needed. Is his department in uh, consultation, uh, is, is he in consultation with them at the moment in preparation for Plan B? The new Office of Health uh, and, and the HOHID has a clearly uh, uh, health improvement and disparities clearly uh, um, assesses a number of factors and government policy in the terms of helping those in more, uh, from more deprived communities and in more, more deprived areas. But if you have specific, if the noble baroness has specific examples, I would hope that you could write to me and I would answer. My lords, my lords, could my noble friend uh, tell me if the government is still happy with the composition, mathematical modelling and advice from SAGE? Yeah, yeah. Can I write to my noble friend on that? <laughs> I wonder if, well, Lord, I wonder if the minister, I wonder if the minister could explain and not write to me, but I wonder if he could explain now uh, how and by whom these decisions are made. Are they made by the chief executive of NHS? Are they made by uh, the secretary of state uh, for health and social care, or do they have to wait for a decision by the prime minister uh, and wait till he returns from his beach holiday? The government is consulting widely on, on, on the measures to be taken, and balancing and, and looking at the, the trade-offs, not only in health, but in, with wider societal factors as well. Nearly a 1,000 people are dying every week from COVID. What's the trigger in deaths? What's the trigger in deaths before Plan B comes into effect? I'm not sure I agree with the noble baroness on the figures that she cites, but I will double check and, uh, and write to her. But in terms of the triggers, it's clear that we have to look at a range of uh, factors before deciding whether to move to Plan B. My lords, my lords, this side, this side. My lords, clearly these are very difficult issues. But could my noble friend help the House, if not today, in writing, to explain? Uh, explain some of the statistics that are being uh, used to judge what is happening with COVID right now. For example, the 
use of uh, COVID positive tests within 28 days of death uh, is not necessarily indicative of what is happening. And the vaccine program seems to have ensured that those who are seriously ill or sadly dying of COVID are those that are not vaccinated or who have serious underlying other conditions, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. in which case we may be being misled somewhat by the statistics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, can I thank my noble friend, for, Baroness, for making that very valuable point? The fact is that there are some uh, demographics, when you look at the bro uh, broken down data, that uh, are, haven't taken up the vaccine as much as they should have, and also including a number who haven't received the booster. So we want to make sure that as many people as possible are vaccinated, so we, we don't have to move to Plan B and can continue with Plan A. And the Plan A does include uh, provisions for ensuring that we increase the number of people vaccinated.